Hi, my name is Ben Ford, and in the next six minutes, I'm going to share with you a crazy and kind of weird revenge story about how I wiped out my electric bill in less than 30 days, broke free from the electric company's slavery, and humiliated some big energy fat cats by getting them to actually pay me for electricity. You'll also discover how an entire town got their sweet revenge on a greedy electric company that had decided it was okay to raise everyone's bill overnight. Turns out, it was a bad decision, and this legal monopoly got a nasty surprise when an angry mob used a secret energy breakthrough against them. But most of all, I'm going to show you how you can use the exact same secret to slash your electric bill by 50%, 75%, or more, and even get paid by the electric company, no matter how criminally high your current bill is. In fact, if the electric bill is driving you to an early grave, and if you're open to finding out more about an unconventional yet super effective way to make your power run slower or even backwards, I promise you that watching this short video is going to be the best thing you do this year. Because by the end of this revealing presentation, which won't be online for long, not only will you know exactly how to save hundreds of dollars on electricity every single month, but you'll also discover how simple, quick, and easy it is to do it so you can enjoy complete energy freedom in as little as a month. Before I get into the nitty gritty details, there's something I want to make absolutely clear. It is my opinion that most people who are looking for any how-to advice, including but not limited to my own, get little if any results. I think this is because they don't take action, or if they do, they usually don't keep trying after hitting the inevitable roadblock. But if you want to succeed, you need an open mind, an ability to try things a little different than you're used to. If you're simply buying how-to information and never use it, you're probably wasting your time. But if you're really dedicated to cutting your electric bill, then you're going to love this. Again, this presentation won't be online forever, so please watch it while you can. Like I said, my name is Ben Ford. I'm a 54-year-old electrician from California. And if I'm energy independent today, it's all because of a little event that turned my life upside down. It happened three years ago in April, yet I remember it like it was yesterday. It was 9 a.m., and I was sipping on my morning coffee when I got a surprise visit from the meter man. Hey, Mr. Ford, I have good news, he said. Looks like next month you'll be paying less on electricity. We're installing one of those new power meters. They're a lot more accurate than your old one, and if you've been overpaying, this will save you some bucks. Good way to kick off a new day, I thought. I was already adding it up in my mind. You know what? Even $20 a month in savings would amount to something by the end of the year, and if it's all for free, why not? He installed the new meter and left, and in a few days I already forgot that this ever happened. It was all business as usual until I got the new bill in the mail and remembered the whole thing. I was itching to open it, like a kid on Christmas morning. And I was back to my calculations. Hey, I wonder how much this new meter is going to save me. $10 a month? $20 a month? It would be nice to save an extra $200 by the end of the year, but what if it's more? So I ripped open the envelope and scanned for that month's figure. And then my heart stopped for a fraction of a second. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And I couldn't understand what was going on. I hadn't saved $20, not even 10 Heck, I was staring at the new bill. It occurred to me that the old meter wasn't so bad after all. And as a cold chill was creeping down my spine, the reality of it all sank in. I was now paying $184 more than the last month, almost double my usual bill. And we hadn't changed anything. No new refrigerators, no new AC units, not one extra light bulb. Nothing that would explain even half of this increase. I grabbed the phone and I called the electric company to ask if there hadn't been a mistake. Their reply, We understand your concern, Mr. Ford, but there's nothing wrong with the new meters. You've probably been underpaying till now. You should be happy. Happy? I was outraged and I wasn't the only one. Because pretty soon, I found that most of my neighbors had been mugged by the electric company too. Everyone was paying anywhere between $150 and $230 more than they used to. In fact, every single one who had a new meter installed was now paying almost double their original bill. Yet no matter how many inquiries we made to the electric company, no matter how many petitions we signed or how many letters we wrote to our senator, nothing changed. We were angry and bitter and we felt like we'd been left alone. All of a sudden, my number one wish was for my old bill to come back. I decided to do something about it, even if I didn't want to. 
So in the next month, I did everything I could to cut down on my electric bill. I changed all the light bulbs with more energy-efficient ones. Then I felt like a fool when I realized how much I spent on light bulbs. I started switching off lights and sometimes the air conditioning, despite the scorching heat. And pretty soon, my family labeled me the power Nazi. It's all for a good cause, I kept saying to myself after yelling at the kids to turn off the lights. I knew I couldn't let the electric company cut into my savings, and I was willing to pay the price. A month later, I was holding a new bill in my hands, but this time I was no longer excited, just a bit nervous. This time I knew the bill would be lower. I just didn't know by how much. And you know what? After getting my family to hate me, after spending a small fortune on new energy-efficient appliances, after going through the hottest, sweatiest month we've ever had, my new bill was just a lousy twenty-three dollars less than last month's bill, and still about a hundred and fifty dollars above what I was used to before they installed the new meter. That moment, I realized there was no way I could beat big energy at their own game, at least not the conventional way, and it was simply not worth it. If I continued like this, we'd probably all get sick during the winter and dehydrated during the summers just to save a few bucks. And what good is a few hundred bucks in savings if you end up spending it all on doctors? Meanwhile, some big energy exec is getting himself a brand new Mercedes Benz with my money. This time, saving a few bucks was no longer important. I wanted revenge. It wasn't enough to save 10% or 20% on my electric bill. I wanted to make the electric company suffer and to feel the same sting I'd felt. I wanted to get entirely off the grid and never depend on those greedy bastards again. But while my neighbors were helpless about it, I had an ace up my sleeve. As I said, I'm an electrician, so you could say I know a thing or two about electricity. And one thing I was absolutely positive about was that conventional solar panels were not a solution. In my neighborhood, you could count the solar-powered homes on the fingers of one hand. The reason for this was simple, and if you've tried to go solar, you probably already know it. Fact is, a simple on-grid solar panel system will set you back at least twelve thousand dollars, the price of a good used car, and you'd still have to buy electricity from Big Energy during the night. Okay, add batteries to your system. Now the price gets ridiculous. If you want to store electricity for nighttime or even just for cloudy hours, expect to fork out at least another three thousand dollars. Usually a lot more, and be prepared to replace those battery banks every few years. Add installation costs to all that, and you'd have to sell one of your kidneys to afford going solar. Yeah, right. But even though conventional panels were not the answer, I didn't give up on my dream of energy independence. I knew, for instance, that solar panel prices were overinflated. And that there's absolutely no reason that they should cost that much. Think about it. The main and most expensive ingredient in solar panels are silicone PV cells, and silicone, in case you didn't know, is the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust. How abundant? Let's just say there's no risk we'll ever run out of it. It's 5.54 times more abundant than iron, 924 times more abundant than carbon. And roughly 251 million times more abundant than gold. That's hardly rare, wouldn't you agree? Yet the solar panel companies are charging an arm and a leg for something that's basically made of the dirt under your feet. And if you know where to look, you can get your solar cells at a fraction of what these swindlers are charging. I also knew that the rest of the components were so basic that there's simply no justification for the thousand percent markup. Other than sheer greed. Now I don't know about you, but I'm not very happy about shelling out twenty thousand dollars or more for processed sand and a few wires. Yeah, no, thank you. So instead of burying my head in the sand and blindly accepting to be taken for a fool by the electric company, I started toying with a really crazy idea. Instead of buying my solar panels, I'd make my own for a fraction of the retail price and claim my solar independence. Easier said than done. The first thing I noticed when I started pursuing my dream was there's no real documentation to be found. Only a dime a dozen e-books, some interesting blog posts that were lacking in detail, bits and pieces of good information, but nothing solid in one place. If I wanted to make my own panels, I had to do it the hard way. So I did it. I went to the library. I spent the next three weeks slaving over all the books ever published on solar panels. I tracked down some of the best experts in solar energy and managed to interview 
some super expensive solar panel installers over a beer. And in a couple of months, when I thought I had enough information to get started, I finally started my do-it-yourself project. I headed to a local store, got most of the supplies, and I discovered a special source for inexpensive solar cells online. Awesome. My total costs, only $97 and a few cents. And I couldn't believe it. The next step was to lock myself in the shed for an entire day. My total costs $195 and change, a drop in the bucket compared to what you'd pay for retail solar panels. I was so anxious to see my new panels work that I installed them the very same day. And just to prove that my work wasn't for nothing, I stopped being a power Nazi that month. I no longer cared when the kids left the lights on. We used the air conditioning, the washing machine, and dryer just like we used to. When I got my bill in the mail, I knew that this moment would make or break me. If my method didn't work, not only would it mean my months of research were a complete failure, but it would also add more dollars to an already bloated bill. This time, I was secretly hoping for a 50% cut in my power bill. Heck, even more if I was lucky. But luck had nothing to do with it. Now, I had my own solar panels. So it had to work. And boy, oh boy, was I right this time. Get this, my homemade solar panels were working so good that I had managed to make the meter run backwards. This means that the electric company was now forced to pay me for the excess energy I was selling back to the grid. Sure, it wasn't much money. It was only five bucks that later turned into more. But it was the most important five dollars in my entire life. My project was more than a success. I created my own mini power plant and I no longer needed the electric company.